Hello and welcome back to the When You're Podcast, the podcast for when you're doing anything. Today we're talking about when you're craving the beach. It's beach time, people. The The weather's nice. It's hot outside. This is the perfect, this is beach weather. This is, this is the time. If you ever wanted to go to the beach or if you've been waiting for it all year long, this is your moment. This is your chance right here, right now. And I'm, and I'm telling you, it's not going to be empty. It's not going to be empty. It's going to be filled with people, but this is your time. This is your beach time. So definitely get out there, jump into the, just hop into the ocean. You know what? Dive into the sand. Do whatever you want to do. You know what I'm saying? This is your opportunity to do just that. Take a little walk. You know, I'm, I'm just saying right now, if you ever felt the need that you, you've been missing some sunlight, if you feel like you've never got to properly, you know, sit down and then take in all in just the atmosphere of the beach. You know, it's very relaxing. It's very peaceful. It, it has a very beautiful feeling to it. So if you've ever felt like this is your chance to get get there, to enjoy that time, now is your chance. You, you get to be so near the ocean. The, 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 there's something about the water, just being close to the water. That big blue stuff. You know, there's, you know, I, for me, I think the ocean should be left alone. You know, let's, let's keep it clean. Let's take care of it. Let's provide good places for the fish. You know, let's take care of the water. Let's take care of the ocean. I believe in that. But other than that, there's not much exploring. We can only go so far down. We, we, we can't explore all of the ocean, right? How crazy would it be if like one day we just decided, you know what, we can explore all of the ocean or like they decide to put cameras down there or like little flashlights so that way it can light it all up and we can actually see what's going on down there. But it's really impossible. So, you know, let's just... Let's just leave the ocean alone and all of its aquatic creatures. Let them live their life and leave them alone. Now, if if you like sunlight, or if you are missing some sunlight, if you feel like you have not gotten out, if you feel like you're more of a homebody, if you feel like you're taking, you know, you're not getting the right kind of nutrients, if you're not getting some vitamin C, or is it, Vitamin D, I, I don't remember, but it's one of those vitamins. If you're not getting your proper daily dose of vitamins, go outside, go to the beach, and soak up some sun. I'm telling you right now, you will feel better. You'll immediately feel, you know, you'll you'll feel that that power. You'll feel you'll feel enlightened. You'll feel so much better about yourself. You're gonna be you're gonna be happy, you're gonna be smiling, as long as you enjoy it. You know what I mean? If the if the it depends on the day, right? I guess if you if you're maybe you don't like sweating or if you don't like being outside, if you don't like uh, any of that stuff, or if you're allergic to the sun, you know there are people out there like that, and that's difficult. That is tough. I I will say that is that is tough. But you got to go to the beach just once. You know, just try it. See if you like it. And in contrast, you got some, you know, the water, it really depends, I guess, right? Sometimes the water is a little too cold. Sometimes it's like just the right, you know, because there's no, there's no adjusting for the temperature. So sometimes the water is just ice cold on a hot day and it's like, it messes you all up. You know, you're, you, you don't want to come out of the water because it's blazing hot out, but you don't want to get into the water because it's too cold so it's like this weird this weird spot that you're put in but overall cool water and some hot sun and you know what there's plenty to enjoy outside of the water there's 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 crabs you know um i mean obviously the sand but we'll talk about that later i, I just feel like it's kind of weird being a crab on the beach. Not that that matters for you craving it, but I'm just saying like, that's kind of what we, 
what we associate with being on the beach. So you get to look at some crabs, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And then the birds, the seagulls, you know, some people like them, some people don't. I got no problem with them. I got no beef. Um, they can be annoying. They can be annoying. They, they, they you know, they squawk. Is that what it is? is, that what it is? They just, I don't want to say chirp, but they're more like, they... They just talk a little too much amongst themselves and they, you know, do the little bird call and whatnot. And you're just like, oh, my gosh, stop talking. And then they just get downright disrespectful with your food. They're, dude, do you remember that video of that girl on the pier or was it like she was outside or like I guess she was at the beach. It was pretty gray out. But anyways, she was eating some fish onion concoction thing and she had the audacity to eat it outside, knowing full well the seagulls were going to come down and swoop it right out of her hands. And that's why they had to record it. They did it in slow-mo, if anybody remembers this. But some girl was eating some raw fish with onions and just swooped down the seagull. Just swooped down and took it from her. And I was, I was happy for the seagull. You know, you earned that. And you definitely deserve that more than she does. 100%. No, not 100%. I'll say... I'll say 75%. You deserve it. Because you know what? I, I, who am I to tell that lady, that, that woman, that she shouldn't eat that? But, you know, outside? Come on. That's, that's like a in-secret type of meal. Like, you don't eat that in public. You know what I'm saying? Like, a, uh, it, it just... It, it didn't even look cooked. I, I can't even, you know, just go look it up if you can. It's just a woman with like a a fish with onions. A seagull swoops down and takes it from her. That's just, that's just what it is. But outside of that, you're over there and you get to swim. I'm at, dude, swimming is so much fun. Especially when you like know how to swim. I guess if you don't know how to swim, you kind of just get in the water and you, you paddle a little bit. And that's how I used to do it a little bit when I was not a a good swimmer. I mean, I'm no I'm not by any means like a, an Olympic swimmer or like super great at it, but like I can keep my head afloat at least. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I won't be able to swim a mile, but you know, I can I can still paddle and I can still, you know, do the motions pretty properly. Which, you know, it makes me think about, like, the professional swimmers. Like, the real hardcore swimmers. The ones that, you know, they swim, like, maybe three miles. You know what? You know what? Let's say ten miles. Uh, you know, those people. Those people are nuts. They're crazy. But they're good at it. They can swim, you know? And that, and that gets them tough. So, they... they more than likely, those swimmers go out during the morning when nobody's at the beach or nobody's there, which is pretty risky. Considering they won't have any help or any backup. Like, imagine the morning text they send. They're like, I'm going out for my morning swim. I'm going to be swimming out a mile. And then I'm going to swim back a mile. And if I don't come back, just know that I drowned. Like, you know, that's that's got to be a real thing. You know, but... The cold water in the morning, it's got to, I mean, obviously when you're used to it, it's not a big deal, but like if you've never done that or if it's kind of like a, you're getting into it, the cold water probably wakes you up as well as probably maybe the drive down to the beach. I don't know where you live. I'm just saying in general, once you get into the water, it's like, oh snap, it's real. You know, I have to swim. And so for the swimmers who swim far, far out there, they just like for miles and miles and miles, they'll swim. And to those people, I say, you are dedicated. You are strong. You are, uh, you know, I have trouble waking up and going for a run. Imagine going out to the beach and having to swim for miles and miles out. Although I guess you could technically do it in a pool. It'd be a lot more safe and there wouldn't be as much... Um, What's it called? The 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 waves, the uh, what's it called? The current. You wouldn't have to fight against the current sometimes, right? 
Although I guess it depends on what you're training for. If you're an indoor swimmer, then yes, train indoors. But if you're like, I need to, you know, I'm doing like a, what are those, they're those competitions where they swim or, or, or they do like um, those triathlons where it's like you swim first and then you go for a bike ride. You know, stuff like that, right? Like, I, I forget the exact name of it, but they they have you do multiple events. So you'll do like a, a mountain bike, you, you know, you'll ride on a, uh, on your bike and whatnot. You'll go for a run and then you end it with like a long swim outside maybe. You know, for those people, for that, that's what you go out there and train for. But for the regular average human being who's not that well versed in swimming like myself, even though I can't swim but just not like, you know, greatly. You just you just get in and you kind of and you kind of float. You kind of just paddle here and there, you know, as far as as far as you can. And with that, you kind of just enjoy the water. There's no there's no pressure. Um and and I've also never seen like anybody get into the water and been like all right let's race let's swim you know uh it's more of like uh all right i'll swim here you swim there we'll throw like a beach ball around and other stuff like that you know just for fun and i remember i watched the spongebob squarepants movie and there was that scene with david hasselhoff just like on his stomach and he's just floating and he's just like swimming like a like a boat and i immediately thought like, that was possible for some reason. I was like, because I don't know what I was thinking. I thought it was like, I thought it was real. I thought he was actually like just swimming like that. Like he had somehow built up enough momentum to just lay on his stomach, head up, and just started, you know, like speeding past the water. So I was like, there has to be a way to get it done. There has to be a way, but there's absolutely no way and... That was kind of like my first swimming epiphany that I was like, there's no way that guy is human. There's no way that actually happened. And it kind of broke the fourth wall for me while I was watching SpongeBob. But I was a kid. I didn't know any better. But anyways, there there's also good water to swim in and bad water to swim in. So like, I gotta say, there, there are some pretty disgusting beaches. It's pretty... You know, the water's not clear, it's all uh, murky, and it's got all kinds of stuff inside of it, seaweed and, and disgusting stuff in there. And then there are other beaches that are just absolutely beautiful to swim in. There, you can see through, you can actually see the bottom, like on some lakes and whatnot, and, and beaches. Dude, that's that's the water, you know, even though sometimes maybe it makes it, you know, your depth perspective perception is a little difficult but that that would happen whether you can see the bottom or you can't you know you'd never know how far you can you can really go until you're actually in it so that's swimmers now there is also surfers if you've ever gone surfing then you know it is not it's not a team sport. There's no, the, you know I've never seen anybody be like hey join our surfing team like and nobody says that they don't do it because it's, it's competitive. Surfing is a competitive sport. It's everybody for themselves and everybody trying to get their own wave. If you so much as dare go surfing and you like, not, you know, not, not to deter anybody from surfing, but I'm just saying like some people go in a group and they go into that group so that way, you know, they get the best surf possible or like the more people that are actually with you, the more likely like you'll take turns or you'll find a good wave or, you know, you all kind of like hang in there together, right? Whereas if you go solo and then there happens to be a group there, you're going to be fighting for your life. You're going to be fighting for uh, for some waves and they're going to be pushing you away. You know what I'm saying? But I, I guess, you know, real competitive surfers who are like dedicated to the sport, they, they get there early as possible so that way they can get on a wave and they can get some practice in before the day even really begins. You know, they get there like 5 a.m. early, early in the morning. 
and it's freezing cold. You got to imagine how cold that water is that early in the morning. But they also, you know, those early morning waves are what gets them ready for for competitions or for anything else that happens. Which, come to think of it, I, I don't really, haven't really seen any, like, you know how there's always, like, um, they always try to make it seem like it's some big surf competition or some final big wave or, you know what I'm saying? Like, they always try to competitively state or say something like, this is the day of the summer the summer surf competition. We got to be good surfers by the time that comes around. And it's like, I've never really heard of a, a surfing competition in my life. I've never seen a surfing competition. So maybe I'm just not looking out for it. You know, there's definitely, they get definitely have to be out there. Definitely have to be out there. But I've never, never heard of or like saw it on like, you know, national TV. It's not in the Olympics, at least I think. Although it should be. Surfing should be an Olympic sport. They can do the, uh, they have those indoor surfing spots. So they can like test your ability to surf. I guess that's the way to do it. I guess that's the way to surf. You don't actually go to the beach to surf. I mean, you get there with your surfboard and you maybe like stay on the, on the board and stuff. But like for looks, you know what I mean? And maybe some small ways, but nothing really too challenging. You go to the indoor spaces where you can like, really practice on your balance. You can get your moves just right. You can focus on staying on. Stuff like that. But I will say the importance of the wetsuit. The wetsuit is your best friend when you're going out to surf because it keeps you warm. The cold water will eat you alive if you don't. All right? I, I've never... Look, I've seen some photos of people like who are like dedicated surfers. They always have their wetsuit on. I've never seen like a like a wet suitless person surfing. You know why? Because it's not get. You know, it's not it's not something that they do. They don't. You know, they don't just go out there in shorts. They go out there in their wetsuit because they know it's important. It's valuable and. Um, I guess it, you know, does something. It does. It does keep you warm, and it, it it adds. Um. I guess it keeps the wind from kind of like pushing you back. I guess it it just, you know, there's no. There's no pushback. I I'm trying. I forget the word. I I I'm so terrible with it. I forget the name of the word. But you know when it's like. There's less friction from the wind. I guess, if that's even the thing I'm trying to say. Anyways. For all you beginners out there, the most important thing is learning how to get up onto your board. Because that part is tricky. Because it's all about balance. You know, the water will lean left and right. But it's all about how you practice when the wave comes, right? Because you swim, you swim, you swim. The wave comes and then you got to get up on the board. And this is where a lot of people have trouble. You can't get up on the board and then you just end up falling over. You just, you can't get there in time or you're not fast enough or you do it wrong. Just practice, practice, practice. Always just up and on your feet, up and on your feet, up and on your feet. And eventually you'll, you'll be, you'll, the drills will, hit you and you'll suddenly be like standing on your own two feet and then comes the balance next comes the balance and you trying to stay on your feet you trying to hang in there for dear life but once you're there and you're riding that wave it's exhilarating it's so much fun it's so it just feels like free it's just like you're floating you know what I mean? It's different from like maybe being on a skateboard or being on like a, on rollerblades, I guess, because those those keep you grounded, right? You can't feel it, but there's different gliding on water than it is gliding on like concrete or cement or anything. It's just something so cool about it. I, except, I, I guess if you're skateboarding, you know, when you like go high up off of the ramp and then you do like a spin and then you come back down, I guess that's, that's a, a floating feeling. But you know you're always going to come back down, right? On the water, you're actually on the water, but it just feels like you're slicing it. It just feels like you're smooth, free-flowing. And it just, that's a great feeling. 
And I, 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 there, there were these surfers. Well, not surfers, but there were the, these people on the beach. I guess they, they were surfers. I don't know. But there was like kind of like a, a trench or like a, I don't know. There was like a, a, a little pathway where the water was kind of digging into, per se. And the beach was... It was just a regular beach, you know, but there was something kind of weird about it where the the sand kind of parted and the, the water would flow into it. So what these guys did was they they dug deeper into the trench, deeper into like the little crack in the sand, and they dug more and more and more, and more water kept pouring in, pouring in, pouring in, and then they used the, the water pouring into the new space to create like a like an outdoor surfing thing you know how like you go you know how they have those surfing spots where they have the machine that f dictates the flow of the water so that way you get like waves and like bumps and, and and stuff like that well they did that but only from digging out the sand and then they created this huge space you can you can look this up on youtube i i saw it i thought it was so cool they completely changed the whole beach you know, but in that moment, everybody was crowded around the sand and it was just, it, it, it just, it was, it looked so cool. But speaking of sand, sand castles, that's the next thing you could do at the beach. If you don't like, if you don't like going into the water, if you don't like salt water, then you can definitely do sand, build a sand castle. And I've never, I mean, they're definitely there. But, like, I remember there have been plenty of times where I made sandcastles. And I'm not going to say they were the best. But it, I, I'll just say I didn't have the tools to make the best one. Right? Because sometimes people have, they have a shovel, they have a pail. I had no shovel, I had no pail. So it was all hands, hands on. Which, which is cool. You know, you can definitely do that. But... With the pail, you can kind of make the castle, you know, you can put all the sand in there and then it packs it all together, then you put it on top and then you make the sand castle. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's the general way to do it. I didn't have that, so I was just like freehand, you know, putting, uh, getting the sand from the water, all the mud and whatnot, and I would put that in with all the rest of the sand to make a strong base. And then you would put the sand on top of it, and then you would make your 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 four walls, and then you would make, like, the castle and stuff. And then you would name it in the sand. But there's got to be some professional sandcastle builders. Like, you, they're... I've definitely seen them. I've definitely seen those people that like go the extra mile in detail and creating their sand castle. You just they they bring all the right tools. They bring like shovels and and buckets and and pails and stuff like that. And they just get to work on making a real sand castle, which is amazing. And and it makes you wonder like what's the biggest sand castle ever made? You know what's I, I want to know what's the I'm looking it up right now. Biggest sandcastle made. Okay. Biggest sandcastle in the world. A gorgeous seaside small town of Blokus in Denmark has created the world's tallest sandcastle, which is a record of a kind. The castle stands at 69.4 feet and weighs nearly 5,000 tons. This thing is huge. That's a sandcastle in Denmark. Took 12 sculptors and three and a half weeks. Wow. Crazy. All right, what's the smallest sandcastle? Let's do a comparison. Smallest sandcastle. Sandcastle. It's world's smallest sand castles built on individual grains of sand. So, so it's just like a, a really, they created drawings of castles on the single grains of, I, I guess it was more of a, um, a picture 
Not really a sandcastle, but anyways, you could definitely build a sandcastle. If people can make a 69.4 feet tall sandcastle, you can make a average to mediocre three feet tall one. You know, just have fun with it. Now, another thing, yeah, you could dig a hole in the sand. That gets people's attention. You bring a shovel to the beach and you can dig out like a little a little pit, like a little sitting area pit of sand. I've seen people do it. I've seen a picture of it. It's definitely fun. It's definitely enjoyable. Now, do you ever see those uh, people running on the beach? People running on the beach definitely have, have it good. If you're running on the beach... I've never seen anybody, like, legitimately run on the beach. Except for, like, in TV shows and movies where it's, like, um, where the, the couple are in love and they do, like, that, that slow motion moment and they run towards each other and they hug each other. I don't know what that's from. I don't know where that trope comes from, per se. Maybe it's Baywatch. But they run towards each other and they hug each other. You could do that. You do that with your your boyfriend or girlfriend or who, your significant other, your best friend. Just run into each other's arms on the beach. That'd be fun. If you're if you're in training, right? If you're, it reminds me of Rocky Three. Rocky Three. They're Apollo Creed and Rocky are training on the beach and they're doing sprints. I don't know how far the sprints are, but they're doing sprints. And then Rocky finally beats Apollo, and then they. They celebrate and they cheer and they jump into the water and like hug and embrace one another. Like that's that's what I'm talking about. That's that's training. That's running on the beach. And they do it in like a, a small little portion, you know? And then they go for like a, a, a morning run on the beach. So it's a lot of it's a lot of uh it has a lot of possibilities for good training if you run on the beach. Although for me, I guess it would be a little annoying. Get my shoes all sandy. Get sand in your socks and whatnot. And then after all of that, you, um, you know, the, the sand is kind of like, it's not great running. It's not great for running, I guess. It's just, it sinks you in and then you have to keep on one step after another. It just feels a little weird. But perhaps that's what makes you enjoy, you know, running on, on cement a lot, a lot more. But while you're running, I mean, you have a, an amazing view of the water. If you're running on the beach, you're, the, the ocean's right there. And you get the reflection of the sun right on there. Maybe wear some sunglasses and whatnot. But you're just running on the beach and you have the, the sparkling blue water right before you. That's got to be cool. That's got to be, be a lot of fun. And you know what? If you get tired... You know, if you're on your run and you're like finished, you're like, oh my goodness, that was such a long run. You can lay on the sand and you can do sand angels. That could be cool. That could be fun. So as a little reward, you get to lay on the beach, maybe jump into the water and then do some sand castles. Although I would recommend some layers of clothes. So that way, you know, you don't get your like your whole body all sandy, like maybe a hoodie and some sweats maybe just so that way you can like freely do the whole sand angel and not worry about like maybe your arms your hands your legs getting all covered in sand although who knows you know maybe maybe nobody cares maybe maybe that doesn't really even matter in this scenario but running on the beach I guess there there's some benefits to it, you know. You get especially if you get there early. If you get there early, there's nobody there. Then nobody will kind of think of you as like a. They'll think that you're 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 exercising, you're training. You're not there to be anything else, you know. You're just there and back. So you get to enjoy the beach for a short time, but you don't have to worry about bringing like snacks and this and that. You can just kind of show up to the beach real quick and then leave does that make sense is that is that does that seem like a, a possibility for for people i know that 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 sounds a little like you're not really enjoying the beach all that much but it is time at the beach and you're working on yourself so it's it's fun 
And then, yeah, it just makes it makes you appreciate cement so much more. It makes you appreciate the hard ground to run on a lot, a lot more, a lot better. Because, like, imagine if we could run on water. It wouldn't. It would probably feel like the sand. You'd probably like sink in a little bit. It wouldn't be like um. It would be like shifting a bit. It would be like pretty different depending on any number of circumstances. The wind, how strong the current is, the waves. But I digress. Now, some beach essentials. Because when you go to the beach, there, there are certain things that you have to take with you. And there are certain things that will just make your life a whole lot easier if you do go to the beach. Okay? And one of those things is definitely, I mean, I, I don't, I think I speak for a lot of doctors here. I think I speak for a lot of dermatologists here. You know, a lot of them would say the same thing I'm about to tell you right now. And that's sunscreen. You definitely need some sun lotion. You need, you need something to protect your body from the harmful UV rays. You need, you know, just something to, to keep you looking beautiful and youthful and young. Something to keep you looking sexy and and sharp, you know? And that's sunscreen, that's sun lotion. And not just on your face, I mean all over. You know, your arms, your legs, your back. It's important that you wear it. And sometimes I've, I've, I've heard people, um, they like have certain, they'll figure out how long it takes. Because sometimes they'll put on some, and then over time, it'll kind of like wear off a bit and you still get sunburned. You're like, why did I get sunburned still? It's like, well, you need to apply another batch because you've been outside for so long and it wears off a little bit. So maybe set like an alarm. So if you put on your first thing, then maybe after two hours or if you're still at the beach by then, you know, maybe decide, you know what, it's time for some more sunscreen. You can never, you can never hurt yourself with too much sunscreen. Uh, you definitely got to bring some towels. Towels are your best friend. They'll definitely help you out. If you bring some towels, not just one, not just two, not just, you know, it depends obviously on how many people you bring, but by bringing some towels into the equation, a majority, a lot of towels, you, you offer yourself a lot of opportunity to stay clean and to, to clean yourself off all the dirt, all the sand, I mean, all of the sand and, and other stuff that's going to come along with it. I, I, I saw that thing where it's like, um, people get like a bucket or like maybe a cooler or whatnot. They fill it with some water, right? And then they put their feet in it to like kind of wash off all of the sand. And then they, they dump out the water. So that way you get all the sand off before you get back into your car or you go back home and you like put your clothes back on or whatever, you know, spare clothes, stuff like that. I think that's, that's definitely, that's definitely, um, a possibility. Now, bring, bring some shade and not, not, you know, shade against other people. I'm talking about like an umbrella, bring like a tent, bring something to kind of like protect yourself from the sun for a little bit because, you know, you can wear sunglasses, you can wear a bunch of, you can, you can wear layers of clothing, but like one thing that you're never going to regret is like a nice umbrella or like a nice little canopy or whatnot to kind of bring to the beach. Just make sure it's it's nailed down or firmly placed onto there because depending on if it's windy or not, you don't want it to get blown away and hit another another family or like a four-year-old and you're just like, oh no, why didn't we see this coming? You know, that's that's just me. You know what I'm saying? That's just, if, if I were you, I would bring an umbrella and make sure it's securely in the sand or wherever, you know, you're, you happen to be lounging about um, I, oh, they, they also have, um, baby powder, baby powder. So if you don't want to do the whole dipping your toes into water and then wiping it off and stuff like that, they, they say that if you get, um, baby powder and you sprinkle it onto your 
foot that's covered with sand, the sand will just come off. Like that's supposed to be a, a trick. That's supposed to be a, a life hack for if you're at the beach, you get all sandy, you put some baby powder on yourself and then you kind of dust it off. It'll, it'll go away. You know, that's, that's, that's what the rumors, that's what the life hacks telling me. But that, that, that should definitely help. And it will definitely save you a lot of cleanup time as well. So sometimes you plan to go to the beach. Sometimes you're like, you know what? We're going to go to the beach on this day. And when we go there, you know, you, you plan ahead. You're like, we're going to bring a watermelon. We're going to bring this. We're going to bring all our, you know, sandwiches. We're going to bring uh, a grill to make burgers and hot dogs, you know, stuff like that. Right. And one thing that you can definitely do if you're like planning, trying to plan ahead is freeze your drinks before you get there. So if you like lemonade, you know, maybe you have like a couple, couple bottles of lemonade or whatever brand of lemonade you want, uh, you like maybe, or maybe you make some freshly homemade lemonade and you put it in like a packaging or whatever, you put it into the freezer and let it freeze overnight. You put it in your cooler and then by the time you're ready to drink out of it or you're ready to drink it, it's ice cold still. Uh, you know, and also some ice wouldn't, wouldn't hurt either. But I'm just saying, like, instead of having the whole thing be filled up with water because the ice will melt, it's probably best for you to freeze your drinks overnight and then put them in the cooler. That way they stay cold, they stay good, and there's no, like, excess ice or water outside of that. Does that make sense? And then... You should also build like a, a sand free space. So if you have like a towel or maybe you have like a couple of um, maybe you have like a tarp or whatever or, or like a blanket or something and you just make a, a sand free spot. You know, you try to try to make it just right so that way no sand can get in. So you make it like a like a small little box that no sand is allowed in. That way you can sit around on the beach and not have to be like covered in sand you know maybe you have like some flip-flops outside and then like you dust off your 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 you know your feet with the uh with the sand before you hop in there so that way it just minimizes the play area space and if you have like a little baby with you or a little kid who kind of wants to eat sand you can keep them away from all of that by putting them in the little space and they can't like grab sand and start eating it. You know what I'm saying? You could also go shell collecting. I've, I've never really seen anybody. Are you, you could get a metal detector. That could be fun. You could look up for some old coins or gold, even, you know, stuff stuck out there at the, on the beach. Um, Ooh, dude, let me tell you. Crowded, beaches i know this is this is everybody's nightmare you go you're like i want to go to the beach you get to the beach and there's family after family after family after i mean just endless amounts of people endless amounts of umbrellas endless amounts of i mean just so many people out there and you're thinking to yourself oh no i should have chosen a different you know, I should have chosen a different day or, I, you know, my life is ruined. Let me just tell you right now, you're right. No, no, it's just about, I mean, it is going to be difficult to find a spot, like a good spot, because all the good spots have been taken. Because one, you were probably too late to the beach. And two, it, it happens. You know, everybody decides to go to the beach at the same time. It's, it's not uncommon. You know, there's, there's millions of people in this world. Somebody's going to have the bright idea to go to the beach. But all I'm trying to say is when, when you go to the beach, right, when you're, when you're craving that beach time, when you're craving going to the beach, make sure you pick a good day. You have to pick a good, a good, solid, a good solid day to go, right, and, and plan. Plan ahead. Planning is, is, a, is something that's going to help you out a ton. But choose a spot. Choose a beach spot that's not going to be habited by tourists. By You know how people go on cruises and stuff? They'll go on cruises and they'll go like beach, uh, beach locations. And these beach locations will be a pit stop for a cruise. 
And because they're pit stop for a cruise, there's a good chance that you're going to be swarmed with a bunch of people and you don't want that. You want, you want the beach all to yourself. I mean, who hasn't been there, right? But just when, when you're looking up the beach you want to go to, make sure it's like, do cruises stop here? And then you'll be like, okay, they do stop here. Maybe if they crowd the beach, it'll, it'll be only for like 30 minutes or like maybe an hour, you know, that way you can kind of plan for it. And you could be like, okay, here comes everybody. Maybe we should get out of here. Or maybe you're like, no, they're going to come, but let's try to secure our spot. And weekdays are your best friend in this. If, if you, if you choose a weekend, you're, you're asking for trouble, but like Monday through Thursday, Monday through Wednesday, really. Those are probably your best days. Those are probably your those are your those are your best friends. Those days to go to the beach, um, even though the weekend is is a lot more convenient, I would just say that try try the weekday. You know, Monday through Thursday, Friday. You know, is a little risky, but hey, whatever whatever can fit into your your particular group or your family or your friends or whatnot. You know what I mean? So. With all of that, when you're craving the beach, when you're craving, you know, just to enjoy your summertime, just take it all in, relax, go swimming, go surfing, build a sandcastle, run on the beach, bring some of your uh, favorite beach belongings and essentials, bring a beach ball, bring a volleyball, bring a frisbee, bring a football, whatever. Uh, go shell collecting. You can, and if you're on a crowded beach, just plan ahead and yeah thank you guys so much for listening i hope i talked i'll talk to you guys all next time thank you